fold up chair and I've also got a blanket. Now you don't need those things, but if you want them because they are around at home, then you can have them there just in case you think that you need some support with your forward folds. Because we will take a couple of forward folds today. And it's quite nice just having a little bit of chill, a nice relaxed um, Sunday practice. Quite often though, the um, ability to really relax and let go sometimes comes a little more easily after we've taken a strong practice. So if that's you, just recognize that, notice it, um, and maybe take poses a little bit stronger if you want to. If tonight you just feel like taking quite a restful, chilled practice, then modify your poses as much as you want. So coming into a seated pose to start. And once you're in that seated pose, just noticing the way that your body is connected to the floor. Notice the parts of your body that are connected to the ground and just start to release down into those spaces. And the release down into those spaces is not a collapse. <laughs> the release down into those spaces is more of a connection, a deepening of the connection of your body to the earth. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a puzzle. How do I deepen this connection of my body to the earth? Right, and so in a kneeling pose, if my blanket's a little short for me, it might be to spread my feet a little wider. And that deepens my connection down into the seat and also emphasizes my connection down into the feet or a little more evenly across my legs. And as I deepen that connection down into the base of my pose, right, I might find that I start to pump my belly up. And so I'm going to find the stacking of my bones upwards. And in that stacking, there comes this powerful rising. But that powerful rising isn't from a tensing, contracting. Instead, that powerful rising is from an understanding of the alignment of my physical body. And from the alignment of my physical body, a freeing of my energetic self. And so in that freeing is a freeing of my breath. And maybe you have a sense of that yourself. And so just finding, as I said, the base of your pose, the alignment of your bones as you stack upwards, a softening of your body as you release down towards the floor. And from there, noticing your breath and the way that your breath moves through your body. Notice as well your energetic levels. How is your energy tonight? Check in, see how you're feeling. I ask you not to place real judgment on how you're feeling. Depending on the weather, I mean today, where I am, it's a beautiful rainy Sunday afternoon. And that sometimes can give us that quiet energy. And sometimes it gives us an irritated energy. So just noticing what your energy levels are in this breath, in this moment, accepting that there may be something you can do to change that, or you might want to just lean into those feelings. And talking of feelings, how are you emotionally? How has everything been? How are you right now? Know this. In this moment, everything is good. In this breath, everything is okay. So be here, grounded in the present, not in the past, in those imaginings, that um, perception of what went before. Not creating the stories and the plans of what might come after, but right here in this world. And any time you start to find yourself out there in space, moving around, come back, come into this moment.
Now from here, when you're ready, with that wonderful alignment, the stacking of your bones upwards, that wonderful rising of your energetic self, just release your hands down beside you and draw them back behind you and clasp them together. You can rest your palms together if it feels all right, or you can just draw your fingers away, maybe touch your thumbs down to the floor. Yeah, so taking a look of what that looks like from behind. It's just the reaching of my hands down and the touching down of my thumbs. I lean back a little. I lift my sternum and I find space across the front of my body, just exploring how that feels and how my breath impacts that movement. Now my back ribs are quite restricted and so the breath is moving quite significantly through the front of my body and the sides of my body and even down underneath my ribs. Right, my organs are having to shift around a bit. <laughs> and then rising back up again. Did that impact your low back? You can see. So right, you can be kneeling or in seated cross-legged. Either is fine. I'm just preferring this pose in this moment, but that's okay. You don't have to. Let's creep forwards and take a fold forwards over the legs. And so for you, that might be seated cross-legged with that lean forwards. Or if, like me, you're in kneeling, it might be more of a child's pose, releasing your forehead towards the floor. Whatever it is, I want you to notice the way that your breath rises and falls through your body. And so as you inhale, lift up like the tide, like a wave rising. And as you exhale, soften back down, crashing down either over the shore of your legs or towards the ground. Inhale, rise up. It might be a very small movement if you're in cross-legged. Exhale, soften back down again. One more time, we're going to inhale, rise up. And then we're going to exhale, soften back down again. We're going to keep this rhythm of breath as we inhale, rise all the way up. And if you're in seated cross-legged, I would love you to change the cross of your legs so that now the other foot is forward. Wonderful. Because we're going to take that motion again. Now, if you're in a kneeling position like me, I invite you to move your knees out a little wider. And again, we're going to fold forwards over our legs. You're either coming into a little supported child's pose or you're coming into a cross-legged pose folding forwards. And it might be a very small fold if you're in cross-legged. We inhale again, we rise up. And we exhale and we soften down over the legs. We inhale, we encourage this little curl of the spine as we rise up. And we exhale and we soften back down again. It might be an opposite action that you're used to with your spine. As you inhale, let's encourage a little curl of the spine and then the head rises. And then as we exhale, we soften forwards again, tidal in our movements. Let's take one more as you inhale, rising up like the tide. And as you exhale, soften back down again. That's it. We're going to rise back up again on the inhale, seeing if we can maintain that rhythm of breath. And we're going to come on over to hands and knees. Yeah, so in your hands and knees pose, still maintaining that smooth, even flowing breath, hands underneath. Your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Let's take a little wag of our tail from side to side, just exploring our hips, maybe drawing circles with our tail. Yeah, maybe it's just a wag from side to side, whatever feels best for you, but notice that as you do, your head wants to move as well. Right? Let your head move. Let your head rock and roll and move with your body. Chances are it's moving in the opposite direction. Right? If you were a monkey in the jungle with your big long tail, <laughs> your heavy head would be moving in the opposite direction to keep you balanced. Right? And so the proportions of our body, the movements of our body, they have that inherent wisdom of how to stay balanced. Let's come back to centre. We're going to move our spine in a slightly different direction now, and we're going to take a rocking forwards through the knees and wrists and, elbow and our, um, shoulders. We're going to inhale, rise up, lifting our chest, lifting our gaze, lifting our tail. And we're going to exhale, coil under, but we're going to draw all the way back towards child's pose. That's it. And then we inhale, we rock forwards again, lifting our gaze, lifting our tail. Exhale, coil back again, all the way back into child's pose. Back. So that's a slow movement pause with the breath, right? But if your breath is a little quicker, then your movement's a little quicker. And then as you exhale, coiling back again. 
as you lengthen your breath, lengthen your movement. Find the floor underneath you, stay connected down into the hands, connected down into the knees. And this time we're going to rock back into hands and knees and we're going to press back into downward facing dog rather than child's pose and just pump the legs, walking out the feet, enjoying a little bit of movement here from side to side. Check in, do your shoulders, do your wrists still feel okay? If they do, you can stay here and move with me. If they do not, then lower those knees back down to the floor and take the next movement in the hands and knees pose. Wait into the left foot, lift the right leg up behind you, bend that knee, stacking that right knee just on top of the right hip as much as possible. Right? It might not be possible. You're just exploring what your movements are. Bring your gaze out onto your right armpit. Then notice that wonderful fluid motion of your breath. And then let's bring that foot back down to the floor, rock the weight over into it, lift that left leg, knee stacking again over the hip, bringing your gaze out under your left arm. Now enjoying this movement, the flowing motion of your breath, the way that it changes the pressure down into your hands, to your feet and flows, still that oceanic fluid motion. Left foot back down. We're going to creep our hands towards our feet so that we're in forward fold at the back of our mats. And we're going to take circles with our hands. It's okay if you don't have a mat. You're just going to explore the space as you move around it. Yeah. Relax your head, give your head a little shake. Right, just a conscious movement from side to side. Very conscious in all of our movements. Movements can become quite automatic, but we're going to be quite conscious in our movements here, seeing if you can find an even pressure down into the feet. And that even pressure means that the front of your feet are connected, the heels are connected, and the outside edges are connected. Also that your left foot is as grounded as your right foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so see if you can find that connection. Now from here we're going to bend our knees enough that we can take hold of our big toes. Wonderful. <laughs> from here we're holding on to those big toes that's going to really limit our movements. We're going to inhale and just float up towards halfway lift, just towards it, you might not get there. And then we're going to soften those knees and release back down over our legs into Fold. Again, we're going to inhale, softening up into halfway lift. There's fire though, right? There's heat in this pose. Exhale, back down into forward fold. Let's take that one more time. Remember, it's just towards. You might not get there. You're really limited by the hold on your toes. And back down into forward fold. From here, we're going to creep our hands towards and we're back in our downward facing dog on our mat. This time, we're going to move our feet in a different direction. So we're going to hug our left knee towards our belly. And then we're going to rock forwards, our shoulders over our wrists. Again, do it in hands and knees if your wrists and shoulders feel sore. And then we're going to inhale and press that left leg back behind us into three-legged dog. Quite square through your hips this time. A little lift of your left hip. Exhale, squeeze. Knee towards your belly, rocking shoulders over wrists. That's it. Inhale, reach back. One more time. We're going to exhale, take a little squeeze towards the belly, rocking shoulders over wrists. Inhale, stepping that foot back. And we're going to put that left foot back down on the floor. Can you lower your knees to hover off the ground? And then can you lift them? Pressing back into down dog. Exhale, lower to hover. Inhale, lift and press. One more time. Exhale, lower to hover. And inhale, lift and press. We're coming to the other side now, leg floats up behind us for a moment and then we're going to squeeze it towards our belly and rock our shoulders over our wrists. Feeling tired? Bring that left knee down to the floor if you are. Reach that right leg back behind you. Yeah, and then squeeze the knee towards the belly. One more time, but this time we're going to end with the knee squeeze towards the belly. Now, so squeezing that knee towards the belly and stepping the foot through the hands. We're going to turn sideways. That's it. And we're going to turn our toes in towards each other. And we're going to fold forwards over our mat here. Now, if like me, a rolled up blanket works well for you here, you can come here and rest your forearms down on your rolled up blanket. If that's an awfully long way away for you, then you're going to bring a chair. 
Now, and you're going to rest your hands maybe on the back of your chair. Now, as you progress, it might be right that your hands come a little further down on your chair. So that then you're resting it down now on the seat of the chair. Before that, you might be a little bigger on the arms of the chair. So there's where a chair can come in quite handy in your practice. If you see that chair just hovering around there, that's what it's doing. And grounding down into your feet, so feeling that connection and just softening your upper body down over your legs, so down between the legs. There's a slow transition of moving your head down towards the floor. Noticing your breath. And even more than that, noticing the connection of your feet to the ground. Releasing down into your feet. Strong and connected. And with that yielding down towards the feet, that connection to the floor, maybe there's space to release your body further and further in this forward fold. And maybe not. Yeah, you may, may reach a point where actually you feel like you just want to come up. And that's all good as well. Now from here, we're going to rise up, we're going to bend our knees and just step our heels in towards each other and then toes in towards each other. And for me, heels again in towards each other and that steps me in quite nicely for a little squat pose. So elbows resting on your thighs, palms together just to check the space of the feet. If you need to bring them in a little further, do. Find again that connection down towards the floor. We're going to take a little twist here. So we're going to bring our right hand down to the floor or up onto the blanket. And we're going to sweep the left hand behind us or up to the side, still squatting down through the knees. So I'll show you side on what that looks like in a minute. And then that hand comes back down to the ground and we reach the other. Yeah. Stay here for a breath. And then bring that hand down to the floor. I'll show you what that is side on and reaching the opposite hand towards the sky. Yeah, so staying seated down in a little squat. Bringing that hand back to center. That's it. And over to the side. Wonderful. And then hand back to center. We're gonna heel toe those feet a little closer and we're gonna rise up to stand, coming to mountain in the middle of our mats. Remember, if you don't have a mat, it's all good. Now this mountain today, our Tadasana pose is going to have feet a little wider than you're used to, so a little wider than your sit bone distance. And so bring your feet to that position and in that position, see if you can really find the base of this pose. Mm. Finding the floor underneath you and visualizing for a moment that you're standing either on soft, warm grass. Yeah or soft warm sand, whatever resonates best with you. So you feel that release down towards the earth as though your feet are softening a little further, yielding down. Release and relax and soften down towards the floor. And as you soften down towards the floor, you feel that your the um, solar plexus softens a little, right? There's a little more freedom with the breath. And then we're going to creep those feet even wider. So you're not too wide, but just a little wider. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my blanket sideways so that now it's running long ways between my legs. And that's going to give me a little bit of height. Now you might want to do that on a block or a blanket or a cushion, whatever works best for you. Hands onto the hips. We're going to start to fold at the hips. Yeah, pressing down into your feet so you're maintaining a nice strength down through the back of your legs. And then bring your right hand down to the floor and sweep your left hand up. Right, so I'm going to sweep it out on an angle from my shoulder rather than sweeping it up towards the ceiling. And then I'm going to stay here for a couple of breaths, 
Feels good to bring my left hand a little wider. I'm gonna honor that. And I'm gonna keep my hips on that same alignment. So I'm not sinking down into my left leg. Right, I'm keeping them aligned. Finding the twist at my waist and the strength through my belly. Still breathing, noticing your breath. That's it. And then we're going to come back around. We're going to bring that left hand down to the floor. And we're going to glide that right hand up. Again, I stretch it out from my shoulder rather than thinking I'm going to reach it right towards the ceiling. And by doing that, I'm going to try and maintain an even alignment through my hips rather than sending the hip over, which is a challenge because naturally your lower body just wants to send it over to the side and lengthen one side. But let's honor the twist of the waist. Let's see where that is. Staying here for another breath, evenly grounded down into the soles of the feet. And then back around to centre. Let's bend our knees. We start our elbows on our thighs. So we play around in this little sumo movement. We're going to heel our heels a little closer. And we're just going to take a little rock from foot to foot. Now, can you release your elbows and come into a little praying mantis movement? Hands in prayer in front of your heart space rocking. And you lift right up onto the tiptoes of one foot and then onto the other. Hey, let's take that once more on the other side. That's strong, yeah? And then let's rise up to stand. We're going to play around a little more in our squat. Now you can turn to face the front of your mat if you like, if that works better for you in the space that you're in. Or you can stay here. We're going to heel toe our feet a little closer. And so now my ankles are a little bit wider than my sit bones. Ideally, we have them underneath the sit bones. But see what works for your body. Ideally, really, is whatever works for your body, right? So we're going to bring hands in front of our heart space in prayer. We're going to stay here for a couple of breaths first. Again, with our feet with this slightly different position, we've changed the angle of our hips, and in that we've changed the angle of our pelvis. So spend a little bit of time strengthening your belly. Yeah, even though you can't imagine the wrapping of your hips together quite so well, we can still create that strength, that knitting inwards of the belly. And then let's glide those hands up towards the sky. Down in prayer. And then we're going to sink down into our squat pose, sending our knees out over our big toes. Strong and lifted through your belly. As you descend, keep those shoulders nice and powerful. Stop when you need to. Maybe you can descend all the way down into your squat. Maybe not. Remember, any time you come into the squat, know that it's okay to have a rolled up blanket or a rolled up mat under the back of your heels. It can really support you and coming into squat and finding out how this pose is. Really, let's play around in a little twist again. Now this is only going to work really if you're quite low down on the ground. So if you're not quite low, then just stay as you are. Let's bring again that right hand down to the floor. What is it to twist and reach that left arm? Yeah, pretty minimal, yeah? So just notice that we're having to really fire up the muscles of our shins. I'm going to lock that right elbow into my right knee, and that's going to enable this stretch a little more. Let's stay here for another breath. And then come back to center, hands into prayer in front of your heart space again. Did that feel okay for your low back? Never pushing into pain. And we're going to come down into the other side. So we're going to just glide. And the other hand up. Again, I'm locking my left elbow towards my left knee so that I can reach that right arm. But mostly I'm exploring a squeezing of my waist, a squeezing even of my rib cage a little, yeah, a squeezing in of my left rib cage, even as my right rib cage reaches and wraps around. Oh, let's come back to centre. Hands interfere in front of our heart space. How are you going here? Let's lift hips away from our heels. 
Let's come up onto the tiptoes. Now, can you glide your hands out into big sunshine arms and slowly rise up, still standing on your toes, reaching your fingertips towards the ceiling, strong through your ankles. If you feel those ankles are starting to bow out, then just lower your heels down to the floor. Let's all lower heels down to the floor. So now we're standing with our feet flat down on the ground. How is your breath? We just took a pose where we were really lifting ourselves up away from the ground. The only part of the feet that we connected, if you were able to take it completely, was the balls of your feet. And that can really lift the energy quite high up into the body, lift the breath. And we'll deepen that in a moment, but first we're going to come through that one more time. So on the inhale, just gliding those hands towards the ceiling. And on the exhale, drawing those hands down through your through past your heart space, all the way down through your center line, lowering down, knees pressing out over your big toes. We're going to explore that twist again, right hand down to the floor. We're going to inhale, reach our left hand. Right, not towards the ceiling, just out towards the side a little. We're going to exhale, bringing the hand back down to the floor. And we're going to inhale, reach the right. Let's exhale, bring that hand back down to the floor. We're going to lift our sit bones off our um, knee, off our calves, hands into prayer in front of your heart. So let's come up onto the balls of your feet. That's it. Let's inhale, glide those hands out wide, rise up to stand. How is that balance on the balls of your feet? Just notice it. Now strong into your belly, strong through your ankles, and then softening back down towards the floor. Now to bring that breath back, we're going to bring ourselves down to the floor and we're going to find some more points of the body where we can connect. So we're going to turn to face the back of our mat, we're going to give ourselves a bit of space, hands into prayer in front of your heart space, final rolling, so bending your knees. Yeah, And we're going to just exhale and coil down, but we're not going to take all of this in one breath. We're going to take a pause as we find that curl between the shoulders and we're going to take another breath here. And then we're going to exhale a little further and as we feel this curl, this, curl, this rolling reach the middle of our spine, we're going to really bend our knees and release our hands. And we're going to take another breath. And then coiling a little further and finding that again this, this spaciousness reaches now the back, the low back. Let's take a breath here. And maybe as you're fully in your forward fold, you can find some space at the back of your pelvis to take a breath and feel some expansion there. And then soften, release down over the legs. Keep those hands forward and come down into a hands and knees position. And from your hands and knees position, press back into child's pose. And we're aiming to really reconnect with the breath, to find that deepening of the breath by deepening our connection to the earth, to the floor. And so that's our main um, consideration here. So whatever you need to do to deepen that connection to the earth. And so maybe that is to be sitting on a rolled up blanket and to have your forehead resting down on that blanket. Maybe that supports you a little. Oh, maybe um, child's pose is just fine as it is. <laughs> and so just see there. But finding all of the points of your legs that are connected to the ground. So maybe it's the top of the feet, maybe it's your toes, your shins, your knees. And then finding that there is a connection through the front of your body towards the floor, just by that folding forwards, that releasing down over your legs. Fist on fist, maybe with your forehead resting down on the fist, or maybe your hands are outstretched and your palms are down on the ground. Whatever child's pose is for you, yeah, whatever you need to take. And let this be a, a child's pose where you relax. Let your arms soften down towards the floor. Let your forehead soften down to wherever it's supported. Notice that as you inhale through your nose, that you draw in, that your body expands, that the tidal pool of your pelvis fills. And that as you exhale, that oceanic breath rolls back out of, the, out of your again. As you inhale, you draw in, you feel that expansion, you feel everything shuffle and move to make space for this wonderful full breath. And as you exhale, you feel everything shuffle back into its normal. 
into spaces as you exhale. As you inhale, now you're drawing in the nurture. Now you are nourished. You're connected. And as you exhale, you're connecting yourself even more fully as you just release a little of your energy out into the world. And so noticing that connection through the breath, taking enough time to enjoy that connection. And then from here, let's come up to hands and knees. And from hands and knees, press back into your downward facing dog. And from your downward facing dog, walk your feet forwards so that you're in forward fold, releasing again your body down over your legs. Now notice, is your breath a little deeper now? Right, is your connection a little more complete? As you inhale, rise up to halfway lift. And as you exhale, back down into forward fold. We're going to take that movement a couple more times. And as you do, as you inhale into halfway lift, really connecting deeply down into the feet. Yeah, so that you have that even connection down into the feet. You're not rocking back into the heels too much. That evenness. And as you exhale, still that evenness, but you need to adjust the bend of your knees to create that. Right? As you inhale, rise up. Last little time through halfway lift. And as you exhale, soften back down. This time we're going to inhale and we're going to swan by all the way up to standing. Sweep your hands towards the sky, lift your gaze. Stay here for a breath. Just enjoying this little back bend. Shall we make it a little stronger? All right, remember, though, standing back bend is pretty strong, but we can bring our hands to the back of our body just on top of your pelvis, right? Supporting your back, roll open through your shoulders. Maybe lift your gaze a little higher, right? And just explore this back bend here. And just then rise back up to stand. And notice. We're staying here for another breath before we counter that back bend. And when we do, we're going to inhale, glide those hands towards the sky, and exhale, swan dive forwards into the foot bowl. Bend those knees, release down over your legs, take a couple of breaths here in forward bowl, just countering that back bend. And from here, rising up to stand might, might be a little bit more of a rolling coming to stand, or it might be a swan dive up to stand. Bring hands into prayer in front of your heart space. We're coming into our walking tree pose. I'm really loving this motion at the moment of the walking tree. So rock your weight over into your left foot and pick up your right foot. So lift it up off the ground and just angle it across the body. We're going to bring our left wrist over our right ankle. That's it, I'll come forward a little so I don't hit the wall behind me. <laughs> and then we step. So we're going to glide that right hand back behind us and we're going to reach the right hand forwards. So our left hand reaches back, that's it. And then we come forwards again. Yeah, leg across the body, left uh, wrist across, over the ankle. And again, let's inhale and step. And then let's exhale back. So we take one more step. We're going to inhale, step. And then we're going to exhale back. But this time we're going to bring that right foot to the inside of the thigh or the inside of the calf. And we're going to reach that left arm out. And then we're going to reach that right arm out. And we're going to find the softness of our tree, the fullness of our tree. So that we're supporting our abundance through our upper butt branches, that we're rooted and connected down towards the earth. And through that connection, we find the deepening of our breath. We are aware of the, our vitality. 
the power and strength. And even though your wrists, your fingers, your elbows are soft, your arms are still strong. You're powerful in your softness. And then let's release that down to the floor. Both feet down on the ground. If you were a little off balance, if you swayed like a tree in a storm, <laughs> and you had to touch your foot down every now and again, you were still balancing. If you kept both feet down on the floor and you just lifted up onto one of your toes, you were still balancing. Even on two legs, you are balancing. You're balancing the soft and the hard elements of your body. You're balancing your inhale and your exhale. You're balancing your energy. And you're balancing on two legs, right? So wherever you are taking your balance, you're okay, you're all good. Don't worry if you sway. Don't worry if your foot comes down to the ground. You're just exploring the movements of your body. Know that you are strong. Know that you are powerful and know that you are soft, loving, abundant. Know that about yourself before you come into this pose, before maybe you have a chance to sit in judgment. Let's rock our weight over into our right foot. We're going to pick up that left foot and we're going to bring our right wrist over our left ankle. So we're exploring now our Shiva's dance. I'm bringing my left hand behind me, just a little, <laughs> just to counter, just to find my center. But also because this dancing pose, the Shiva's dance is a pose that I really enjoy. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's just an exploration. Now we're gonna play around with this dance a little. We're going to float that left leg back behind us and we're going to reach that left arm forwards. And then we're going to link it with the breath. The exhale is where you bring that left foot forwards and that right wrist over ankle. The inhale is where you float that left arm forwards and float that left leg back. The exhale is where you float forwards. The inhale is where you float back with the leg. This time as you exhale that leg forwards, let's pop the sole of the foot to the inner thigh, or maybe we'll calf. Reach your right arm out to find that balance. And then reach that left arm out to find and support the weight of your branches. And so you have softness through your wrists, through your elbows, but you have power through your arms. Find that connection down into the sole of your right foot. I feel that connection. Forgive yourself if every now and again you need to touch your left foot down. It's okay. It's all good. You are just exploring the movements of your body. Are you ready? Let's float that left foot back down to the floor. And now we're going to take our shimmy shake, right? So we're going to start shaking, wobbling those legs. Shaking out all the muscles of the legs. Yeah. Can you get that shake moving up to your bottom, to your belly? Yeah, can you get it shimmying across your chest? Shaking out your hands, shaking out your arms. How's that breath? Yeah, we've started to lift our energy a little with the shaking. Let's stay grounded down into your feet. Keep shaking, 
keep shaking. Maybe we can give our head a little movement, soften your jaw. And then find a moment to be still. As still as we can be with our breath moving our body, animating our body. And notice the little humming, the little tingling through your hands. Hmm. From here, we're going to take a little fold forwards, get there how you want to. And from this fold forwards, we're going to creep our hands forwards to hands and knees. And then just step your left foot forwards. Bring a mat or a blanket underneath your right knee if you like. It might be that you can creep that right knee back, but we're not collapsing through the hips. We're still grounded, we're still pressing down into the base of our pose, and that's creating a little lift. We're finding a lovely space through the right hip. Maybe there's space to come into a little back bend with your arms lifted. Right, maybe what happens there is you start to pop that left knee uh, back a little. And so just explore. Are you still strong in this pose? Are you still lifting up away from the ground by pressing down towards the floor? Now from here, we're going to straighten that left leg and take a little fold forwards over it if that folds there for you. Again, you can use your chair if you like to rest on the back of it, or you can stay upright. So these chairs are really good because you can pop your foot underneath it. And then you've got something to lean on. Blocks are great, chairs are great, anything that supports you and, and allows you to modify your practice. And then let's take a little sit back. Sole of the right foot towards your inner left thigh. And we're going to continue that stretch down the back of the left leg, but less impact on this knee. Yes, that knee up on your blankie if you like. We're just going to soften forge over that left leg just as much as is possible for you. Now, as you soften, you might want to, like I am, just give your leg a little bit of a massage out with the heels of your palms. You really need a massage out your thigh. Need a massage out your lower leg. I want you to observe if the massaging out of your body makes you feel a little uncomfortable. I know that it doesn't feel like a massage from someone else or <laughs> a professional. Maybe you are a professional masseuse. Yeah. But still, there is still the squeezing and the release through the fascia and the squeezing and the release through the muscles of your body. And so there is still that benefit there. As well as that, there's the sensation that happens from your hands on your body and from your body underneath your hands. So just be connected enough to be really aware of those sensations. And at the same time, right, you're having a nice little stretch forward over that leg. When you're ready, we're just going to pause on that massaging and we're just going to soften forwards over the knee. For a couple of breaths. And then come on up. Come over the hands and knees, preparing for the other side. We're going to step our right foot forward. Yeah, pressing down into the soles of the feet, rising up. Yeah, hands into prayer in front of your heart space first, if you like. Just want to explore how this pose is feeling. Crowding down into the sole of that right foot. And maybe with that deep connection down towards the floor, maybe it's possible to reach those hands and come into a little bit. Only if that's creating a nice stretch, even more so through your left hip, but still with that support. You start staying strong and engaged through your buttocks. 
Now keep that containment, keep that contraction going. Strong down through your legs, which is lifting up through your upper body. And then from here, we're going to straighten our right leg. Again, rest on the chair if you like. Maybe you have the space to fold forwards over that right leg. Maybe resting those hands or those elbows on the back of a chair feels good. Just a couple more breaths here. And then we're going to glide down to seated, sole of your left foot in towards your inner right thigh, get a little bit of a better view of it from this side, <laughs> and taking the fold forwards over that right knee. Yeah, and in this fold, as you move like the ocean, rocking and rolling, lifting and then descending, perhaps it feels okay to give your leg a little massage. To massage out across your thigh, to massage down across your shin, maybe just squeeze along your ankle or your foot. Perhaps going to depend on how far you can reach, right? But just give your leg a bit of attention. Being aware of not just the sensation of your hands on your leg, but the sensations of your legs under your hands. So many nerves in the palms of our hands and our fingers. When you're ready, we're going to come to a little bit more stillness, folding forwards over that leg. You can just notice in the rising form of your body. And then coming back to seated. Extend your legs out wide. Toes pointing up, shins angled up. Sitting again up on a raised surface if you want. If you need to, or just if it feels better. Now it can feel nice to just lift and pop yourselves a little further forwards. From here, taking a fold forwards over your mat or between your legs. And just noticing, right? Just noticing, are you limited by your own self belief here? Or are you limiting the movement because your body's telling you that it's gone far enough, right? Is it your mind or your body? Can you, even in this fold, maintain the connection of your body down towards the floor, maintain your connection down into the sit bones, down the back of your legs, be aware of where they are connected? And then slowly, slowly making your way back up to seated. Bringing those legs back towards each other. Take a little squeeze of those legs towards each other. Give them a little squeeze and take a fold forwards. Notice that really lovely release that happens down the back of your legs. But notice if you've folded a little too deeply and it's lifting you up away from the ground a little. <laughs> Sometimes happens. Yeah. And remember that we have um, that alignment through our spine that we want to maintain. Wherever your curves are, just maintaining the natural curves of your spine rather than trying to get that head to base all the way out to the machines, right? The back of your head is a curve of your spine, and so it's just folding, just like the left of your head, over the shoulder of your head. One more breath. 
in writing the project lead. I'm to a seated cross-legged position. Wonderful. And from here, we're going to bring our hands out in front of us. We're going to make a basket, turn our hands inside out, and just reach them towards the ceiling. Now, there can be that temptation to lift your gaze towards your hands, right? But we're going to keep things nice and quiet through the body, even though our arms are lifted. Chin just ever so lightly tucked. Just lightly, not too much. Now, there's a strength through your belly in order to support you down into the sit bones. If there's not that strength, what happens is you tend to collapse your low back and you may need to bend your elbows a little more. So strengthen. Feel that um, alignment of the pelvis as though it's a bowl of water and you're holding that bowl of water in, not to bring it out the front of the back. Now, if you want, you can change the cross of the knee, your legs, but it's not important. It's just uh, totally up to you. We're going to bring those hands down and we're going to touch our left hand down beside us. And we're going to sweep that right hand up along the front of the body and then up and over. Right, so that pathway is towards the right, uh, the left fingers and then up and over first, rather than back towards the back of you and over, it kind of limits the movement. It's a forward movement. And then ground down into that right sit bone, but reach away through those right fingers so that you're finding a nice little stretch through the side of your body. Let's stay here for a breath. and then creep those hands back to centre so that we can come to the other side. So bringing that right hand down beside you, sweeping that left hand towards the right fingers and then up and over. And finding that nice little lean, the length along your left side. Each exhale reminds you to strengthen that belly to support your spine in this pose. And then making your way back to centre. Let that settle in for a moment. And then once it has settled in, we're preparing for Shavasana. We've got one more little movement before we come to it, but from now, if you want to put something in mind, do it now so that when we come down to the ground, we can chill there, maybe just throw a blanket over us. So when you're really roll over onto your side and come down to the floor, bring your feet to the back the edges of your mat and your knees tracking over your feet as well. This is going to be a twist today. It's going to be a very gentle twist. I find it a gentle twist. See how it is for you. We're going to lift our hips and pop them back down a little further away so that we've minimized that curve of our low back. And then just draw your left knee over to the left hand side. And then just let that right knee rock with it so that the left knee maybe touches down and the right knee just falls a little further away from the rib cage. Feel that lovely stretch down into the um, right side body. And then let's draw that right knee back. Now move it independently if you can. But you reach a point where that left knee starts to move as well. And then you're going to draw that left knee over so that you can bring your right knee down to the front. Yeah. So now we're finding a lovely stretch along our left side body as we draw that left knee away from our rib cage. We're staying here for a breath. <sighs> Bring those knees back to centre now. Hug them in towards you. Release your low back. Lift it off the ground a little. You can draw circles with your knees or you can rock your knees from side to side. And now prepare and push your ass up. Give yourself this time. All of this practice has been a preparation for this pose. Can you believe it? This moment of stillness. So bring your feet down to the floor. And it can feel really good to have that rolled up blanket behind the back of your knees. But if you don't have a rolled up blanket, it's okay. Just maybe notice if it feels like it's a little bit tight through your low back, that you maybe need something to push in the next time. Feel your shoulders as they soften down to the floor, the back of your head as it connects really deeply. Feel this letting go of your body down towards the earth and close your eyes. Close your eyes and soften.
deepening your connection down to the floor. And as you deepen your connection down to the floor, the muscles of your body soften and release. And you notice that there are little spots of color that you can see even with your eyes closed or little spots of light. You notice that your breath moves your body and your body moves your breath. And you soften a little more, softening the muscles of your face, of your jaw, of your tongue. Softening and relaxing the muscles of your scalp. Softening and relaxing the muscles of your neck and throat. And as you do, you feel your head connect a little more deeply with the earth. And you feel supported and held there. There's no need to hold your head up. Softening and relaxing across your shoulders. That release rolls down your arms all the way to your fingertips and thumb. And then rolls back up again as you soften your hands, your wrists, your lower arms, your upper arms, and your armpits. Soften and relax now down the sides of your body, your rib cage, your waist, your hips. Softening and releasing all the way down your legs to your toes. And that release rolls back up again as you soften the muscles of your feet, ankles, lower legs, knees, and upper legs. Relax and soften across your pelvis. Release and relax up the muscles of your spine, your back, between your shoulder blades, across your shoulders, softening your chest. And your belly. Releasing a little more which, with each and every breath, which deepens your connection to the earth and allows you to surrender and soften a little more. Release. Let go. Feel that there's a softness, a fluidity about your body. It rolls beyond the edges of your physical being and then rolls back in again. But that, that, that deepens your connection even further and allows you to soften even more. Relax, release, let go. Surrender to Shavasana. Feel your energy lifting, rising, 
maybe allowing yourself a little movement through your fingers and toes, maybe a little stretch. Where you want. And then taking that movement over onto your side. From your side, pressing yourself up into a seated position. And when you get there, let's take a big sigh together. Now, if you would prefer to take an um, you can use this opportunity to take an um. So when you're ready. Wonderful to have you practice with me. Namaste.